the French. You know anything about the French? They do like to fight, but poorly led, poor intelligence, and the Germans took advantage of it. They broke through. Did I tell you about the plants getting stolen? Yeah. Not stolen, but. Yeah. I didn't draw for the other classes. I did. Aww. I still don't know how you got that right. You know, I was just born with those skills. I don't like it. So, the Germans cut them off just like that and totally shocked the French. For four days, the French were not really sure where they were. I know you're thinking, how could you hide 500,000 men? But just by the nature of the communications, because the French leadership and their intelligence was so bad. And so, the British and French were up here, and they were cut off. And that is when, did I mention the new Prime Minister of Britain? During the, 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 I thought I did. Okay, I mentioned that. Did I mention Norway? No. I didn't mention Norway? Was I even here? <laughs> oh my goodness, I totally forgot something. Put this in the margins, I forgot something. April 1940, just before they attacked France, Germany attacked Norway and Denmark. Partially to protect their northern flank to secure the trade route with Sweden. And the British and French tried to stop them. And this was a disaster, even though they destroyed much of the tiny German navy. It was a disaster up in a place called Narvik. And the British and the French tried to stop them, had to pull out. Well, because of the disaster on, in Norway, just by coincidence, on the same day that Germany attacked France, on May 10th, 1940, Chamberlain was ousted from power. Actually, he was part of the new cabinet. And a new prime minister, a backbencher named Winston Churchill. Churchill was a very prominent politician. He was first lord of the Admiralty when World War I began. But he had made a number of mistakes. Hitler was, or I'm sorry, Churchill was known for all kinds of schemes and plans that were normally really stupid. And he made a number of mistakes as first Lord of the Admiralty, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, which is their like a Treasury Secretary. And he was actually um, basically thrown out the pasture, had no power all through the 1930s. But he warned against Nazi Germany and against the peace. So when war happened. Chamberlain brought him in as first Lord of the Admiralty, and because nobody else really wanted it, he became Prime Minister on that day. And Churchill, by the end of 1940, would be back to his crazy schemes and doing a lot of really, had some really bad ideas. <coughs> but for a couple months, Winston Churchill was great. He arguably saved Western civilization. That's not the big deal. And yeah, the other person who could have been prime minister, a guy named Lord Halifax, he almost did become prime minister. He he actually was a kind of a Nazi sympathizer. So they probably would have made peace, and who knows how things would have been different. But Churchill's in power, and once he realized that about 250,000 British soldiers here, that really fought. They're cut off. He made a decision that infuriated the French. He had them pull back. The problem was, the Germans had cut them off. And so there's just a couple spots that weren't even really harbors. But they found one right here at a little wharf called Dunkirk. And this would be Hitler's fatal mistake number one. Hitler, who was all for this dramatic plan, when it actually happened and happened so well, he lost his nerve. And at the end of November, he ordered his tank divisions, called Panzer Divisions, to stop here and refit. If they would have turned up the coast and took Dunkirk, so we wouldn't have stopped the tanks. And if they would have taken Dunkirk, Britain could not have pulled those troops out, and it's unimaginable Churchill standing in the war. That would have, it's already humiliating defeat, but if they would have only pulled out, let's say, 10,000 men and not 250,000, his government probably would have fell, and they would have sued for peace, and we'd have an entirely different court in the course of history.
So this really was a humiliating British defeat. But they pulled those troops out. And in a week, by a combination of a number of different things, they pulled out 250,000 British and 90,000 French troops. And the movie, who had seen the movie? It's pretty amazing how there'd be two movies um, about the exact same time period that'd be popular and both be nominated for Academy Awards this year. Dunkirk and uh, Darkest Hour are all about this time period. It's pretty amazing they both got nominated. But the guy in the Lee Churchill won the Academy for Best Actor. But I just, it's interesting. Britain has this little bit, they want to remind everybody they won World War II. And if you don't know about the BBC, there's always shows about how we got the Nazis. Well, anyways, they pulled out. Yes. And the movie does a good job. The only thing is about it is, you know, the British did commandeer everything that could float, but they didn't use civilian troops. They used Royal Navy reserves. But for the movie, it was nice. You know, it kind of had a good little dance civilian so we could get to the storyline. I don't think it changes too much. The movie's still pretty good. But after Dunkirk, they pulled back. And after about two weeks, actually it was June 10th, the Germans made their last attack on Paris, and France just fell apart. Their government collapsed when they first broke through. The morale collapsed. They went through three different commanding generals, and just the political system fell. And France only lasted uh, only about two and a half weeks after that. Yeah, it was this. The date you need to know is June 26. June 26, 1940, France surrendered. And Hitler would have them surrender the very same rail car that Germany surrendered in World War I, and then they blew that side up. They blew every everything there up. So the French Memorial of World War I would be forgotten. And Hitler, it's a big deal. We got him back in World War I. We did. The assumption was Britain would surrender super peace, make some kind of peace terms. Because remember, Hitler wants war here. But Britain did not quit. Churchill talked about it. It was actually much closer than people realized. They talked about it. But they decided to stay in the fight. They would not quit. And so, now what? I don't know if you know this, but Britain is an island. This is water. How do you get 20 miles? Boats. Boats are <laughs> Catapult. Ah. <laughs> The Royal Navy was too strong. Germany could not invade. They made plans, but there's no way they could get across channel. So what they decided, okay, let's get a humiliating defeat on the British and they will sue for peace. And we're coming up to the Battle of Britain. Now, the Germans didn't call it this, but Britain would. And what this was, it's an air war. And the Germans are going to try to destroy the Royal Air Force, the RAF. They figure if we can knock out their air force, Britain will have to sue for peace. The vision of British bomb or German bombers going unopposed all over Britain, there's no way. And they sue for peace. Now, Germany has more planes. They're experienced. But their fighter planes are really short range. They can barely make it to London and fight for about 15 minutes after turn on. Their bombers were not very well defended. They're pretty slow and don't carry big bomb loads. And there's another big deal. If a British pilot is shot down, they're able to bail out, they can be back in a plane the next day. What happens if the German pilot is shot down? Or a POW? They're prisoners. And so, this is going to be a big battle of attrition. Which Air Force can survive? The Germans are bigger. The British had home field advantage and a technological advantage that the Germans didn't realize. Radar. 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 Exactly. The Germans did not, the very anti science <laughs> Nazis, underestimate the power of radar. So they didn't target the facilities. And even though radar was really crude, it's brand new, it was really originally for weather. You um, broadcast radio waves, and if it bounces off of something, you pick it up in a receptor and you get an idea of what's coming. Then it was just, you look at a little, it's called a capital array tube, and you just see a little bit of static. A lot of static, something big. Not very much static, something small. But by the end of the war, they could tell individual points. And 
The Germans never realized what a big deal this was. Every big German raid, the British could put out some fighters that packed them at them all the way. Just kept shooting down more and more German pilots. Just kept shooting them down. Oh, yeah, the British lost a lot, too. The British were also lucky they were making two very good fighter planes. It just happened in the hurricane. If they wouldn't have been making those planes, you can't also retool your factory and just, hey, we're going to make great planes now. No, it takes months. They're really lucky. But by September, starting in August, by September, the RAF was in trouble. And then Hitler would make fatal mistake number two. That's supposed to be a two. Just imagine that's two. Yeah, kind of looks like this. Yeah. By mistake, a germ uh, some German planes bomb a residential area of London. They've been avoiding that terror bomb. Churchill, thinking we have to have some kind of response. Britain had a lot of heavy bombs. They would spend almost forty percent of their resources on heavy bombers. In the war. It's actually remarkable how much they spent. They did a nighttime raid on Berlin. Not a huge raid, but a raid on Berlin. Hitler was furious, and Hitler was getting bored with how long this attack against the RAF. And this is the mistake. Hitler, embarrassed by this, wanted revenge. And he would initiate what the British would call the Blitz, which is terror bombing. Terror bombing of cities. So they abandoned the attacks of the RAF, the airfields, the Minish or the uh, airplane factories, and they went after civilian targets. And this was a shock to the civilians, especially at first. And this was terrifying and demoralizing, but the RAF survived. And they knocked out a lot of German planes. In fact, the Germans had to resort to night bomb because they lost so many planes. So civilians are the targets. 60,000 British civilians who died in this year. But <clears throat> the war planners, the whole thing about total war, and I told you this before, you attack the enemy like this, the random terror of these nighttime bombing raids would convince British civilians to turn against Churchill. That's what they thought. But instead, who did they blame? And who did, what did they want after putting them together? And <coughs> it doesn't work the way they thought total war. No, the British civilians. British civilians blamed Hitler. And that's as soon as Britain could, they started targeting the nighttime bombings of cities. They called it area bomb, where they would literally just kind of plot out a residential area and just try to drop as many bombs, soon incendiary or fire bombs, and kill as many civilians as possible. And Britain would return what Germany did many times over. One night in 1943, this is 43, so we're still a couple years from the war ending, in Hamburg, one night, Britain killed 40,000 civilians. One night. That's just the beginning. Yeah. And that's not, even, that's not going to be the worst. And then the U.S. would adopt that. Um, in March of 1945, against Germany. And against Germany, too. They started against Germany, too. And so, with that, that's mistake number two. Britain is still in the fight. Britain is still fighting. I should add, one thing. While this is going on, what is the United States doing? The United States is neutral. They passed a couple neutrality acts. The U.S. doesn't want another World War I with all the debt. And um, no country has paid back their debt to American banks, and, except for Finland, which was, didn't become a country until 1917. In fact, the American policy was called cash and carry. The British would have to give hard money, gold or they couldn't get any kind of munitions or food or oil from the United States. No credit. This was to avoid all the problems of war. Now, this is a big deal because by November, Britain's out of money. 
The United States literally sent a cruiser down to South Africa and loaded it up with the last remaining uh, British gold reserves that were in Johannesburg. They had nothing left. It was a big deal. But most Americans were isolationists. Most conservatives wanted nothing to do with this war, both Democratic and Republican conservatives. But Roosevelt was re-elected in 1940. Third term. And that would allow in 1941, liberals would finally get Lend-Lease passed. And Lend-Lease was the United States would loan equipment, supplies, food to countries fighting aggression. Meaning what country? Fighting who? Britain. Britain. Britain fighting. And then the bulk of it, over $5 billion, which $5 billion will go to Britain, almost $3 billion will go to the Soviet Union. Worth every penny. With the idea being, after the war, we'll, they'll give it back. <laughs> now, of course they're not going to give it back. Everybody knew it. No, we're not going to get a tank back. We don't want the tanks back, or whatever it might be. Because no one wanted American tanks. But, <laughs> but, uh, you know, we're not going to get the spam back that we gave the Soviets. And it just basically, this was an investment to stop Germany. And we underpaid. They earned every penny of it. Every penny. When 25 to 30 million Soviet citizens would die in World War II, they broke the back of the German army. It was worth every penny. So, that's what they did. Roosevelt, his analogy was, if your neighbor's house is on fire, wouldn't you loan him the garden hose to put out the fire? <laughs> it was all just a political scam just to get weapons and everything else worth it. You're going to say about defeating Germany. So, you want fatal mistake number three? Fatal mistake number three. Germany had not fully mobilized for war, and they cut back again by a third. Cut back on munitions. By one third. You know, they stole so much from France, and Hitler wants the German economy to be booming so he'd be popular, but they're in total war. So while Britain is making every sacrifice to get weapons out there, Germany's cutting back. Do you want another mistake? Yes. Number four. Then he ordered his, he told his generals, with Britain still in the fight. Britain's about ready to surrender around anything to worry about. Let's attack our real mortal enemy. Who? The they attacked the Soviets with the code name Operation Barbarossa. That's <coughs> by the way, anyone know what Barbarossa is? Barbarossa was an Barbarossa the Great, an emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, which was the first Reich. The Second Reich was under Kaiser Wilhelm II. The Third Reich is Hitler. And he was a hero for organizing the Holy Roman Empire. But this is a bad omen. Anybody know what happened to Barbarossa? Yes. Huh? He was on his way to the Second Crusade. And in what is now Turkey, fearful of attack by Saracens, he was in full armor. And while crossing a creek that was about knee high, he fell off his fell off his horse with on his back in full armor. Oh God! Oh. Couldn't get up. Drowned. Wait, was there no one to help him? Like, well, yeah, the problem was there. All the men around him were in armor too. So yeah, they, 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 it's hard. It's very difficult to get off your horse. Let alone get on your horse in armor. So. That's a bad omen. I drew this map up for you too. And this map is just something so I had something to draw on. I know what you're saying. It is a beautiful map, isn't it? Anybody know what I just drew there? It is Operation Barbarossa. And it's going to take place on June 22nd, 1941. That's an important date, isn't it? June, tw the night of 21st to the 22nd is the shortest night of the year. So you have the longest day. You think about the northern latitudes, oh, you have a couple hours at night. So they can attack, literally start the attack at 2 a.m., the first daylight in the north. And we also had to wait for the spring mud to clear up the spring rains. 
France has modern roads, paved roads. I want to tell you about the gas stations. They don't. Oh, I didn't tell you that one. Okay. So, but Soviet Union, it's still mud. Because you have dirt tracks. Think about what heavy rain does to a dirt track. And the mud, especially in the north, is literally like a, a glue. So it is clay. And when it gets, you know, it just can't drive on the roads. Tanks will drive themselves into the, the dirt. Horses drown in it. Men can't move. I mean, their mud is so bad. So you have to wait till spring. Day. I should have had this. Almost forgot something. When France is about ready to fall, Mussolini's watching this. He goes, I'm jumping in. So Mussolini would declare war on France, and that's how Italy got it. He thought the war would be over, it would be like a big peace conference, and Mussolini would scoop up some land. His army was not ready, the country was not prepared, and he would be eventually ousted from power in 1943. The Germans would make him a puppet in northern Italy, but he would be killed by partisans in 45, butchered. Yeah, hung in a uh, gas station somewhere. But that's that's the end of Mussolini. Okay. But to bail the Italians out and try to invade Greece, the Germans and the Italians, along with their allies, Bulgaria, Romania, and Hungary, they invaded Yugoslavia and Greece. And we will come back to what happened in Greece. So we're not going to worry about that right now. And then, 22nd the attack. Stalin, now, let's be clear about something. We're talking two tyrants. <laughs> Which one of the two is going to break the agreement first? That's really the question. It's Hitler. But it turned out to be Hitler. Stalin's logical. He looks at it thinking, no way Germany will attack this way with Britain. Don't they remember World War I? But Hitler, there's no real rationality here. He's obsessed. When Stalin's spies tried to warn him that Germany was going to attack, not only did Stalin ignore them and order his army not to prepare. Anybody want to guess what happened to those spies? Because yeah, Stalin didn't want people to and their family. Because Stalin didn't want people to know what a mistake he made. So on the 22nd of June, and this is the Polish border in Romania and Hungary, when the Germans attacked, it took the, it took the Soviets completely by surprise. Completely by surprise. And Stalin would not allow his men to pull back. He ordered them to stand where they were and they allowed for hundreds of thousands to be surrounded. And the three main avenues of assault. What St. Petersburg, the Bolsheviks would rename it to what? Leningrad. Leningrad. Now it's St. Petersburg again. The capital, Moscow. And then the resources in Ukraine. In the Ukraine. I was still on my way. In Ukraine. It's a three prong. German army was not big enough. And so as they begin to advance here and here, the bulk of the forces were towards Moscow. At Minsk, it took them just a couple weeks to advance 400 miles. And they captured, or they surrounded 300,000 Soviet troops. At Smolesk, a month later, 400,000. They advanced over 1,000 miles within the Soviet Union. They captured or killed hundreds of thousands of Russian soldiers. But Everybody around the world thought Stalin would fall in six weeks. After the purges and various other things, they just assumed Stalin would collapse, Germany would win. Everybody believed Germany would win. And yet by the end of August, they're still fighting. The Soviets are still fighting. They're, they're not stopping them, but they're fighting and doing much better. And also, the Soviets have a lot better tanks once they figure out how to use them. And there's something else. Remember? 90% of their transports horse strong. They captured a bunch of French trucks and used those for transport too, but they broke down on the top Russian roads. Same with the German. They're outrunning their supply lines, and that would be key. Supply. They couldn't use Russian trains because Russian trains had a different rail gauge. Gauge the gap between the rails. The Russian rail gauge was wider. You see why they did this? Hard to invade. It rushed so big. And so by the time they got the Smolets, it was taking three gallons of gasoline to drive one gallon of gasoline to the front. 
That means you have barely enough room for munitions. And what don't they have room for? Food, Food or winter gear. It's all or nothing before the winter hits. And here's where Hitler makes fatal mistake number five. It's actually mind-boggling mind how many horrible mistakes that they're going to make. They still almost win. They're right here. They have enough time for maybe one last gasp effort to take Moscow, and maybe the political defeat of losing Moscow, Stalin might fall. But instead, Hitler, this is what we got to get. He orders his main forces down to the Ukraine, right here, to surround Soviet troops at Kiev, the capital of, now the capital of the country of the Ukraine. They would surround 900,000 Russian troops. Hundreds of thousands would be killed. The grave, the military cemetery there is, is one of the more, now, I've never actually been able to see pictures of it, but it's just this field and it just helps. The, German, the Soviets just put helmets for every man who died, and it goes on. It, it, it's incomprehensible how big it is. Yeah, there's a whole hill that's just blocked. And, but by the time they're ready for the last attack on Moscow, by the time they're ready, it's September. See the problem. So when they start to attack, and the Soviets are almost out of reserves, but 200 miles from Moscow, the rain started. Stopped. Couldn't go. Done. And then it froze. So at first they could drive. But I don't know if you know this, but it tends to be cold in the Soviet Union. Colder than my room. Massively cold. <laughs> German agents weren't ready for 30 degrees below zero. And big German draft horses, big draft animals, they're not, they're not bred for this. And they died by the tens of thousands. And they just stopped. The last gasp, they got to the, they could see one of the reconnaissance, the spirals of the Kremlin. That was it. There's a big monument right there. And this is the furthest advance of the German army. Big deal. And this would trigger the battle of Moscow. And the Battle of Moscow would be the last couple months of 1941 into 42. And the Germans were stopped. And then the biggie, the Soviets counterattacked and protected Moscow. Stalin was about ready to leave, but then they got 30 below and he decided, I'm okay. <laughs> okay. They had 500,000 troops here in Manchuria, on the Manchurian border as the Japanese. And a spy in Tokyo got back to Mo got it back to Moscow that Japan's not going to attack with their allies and Germans. They're going to attack someplace else, and that allowed Stalin to get those troops and counterattack. Where, where were the Japanese going to get their oil? The Dutch East Indies, exactly. And so, with that, the Battle of Moscow might be the most important battle of World War II. The Germans were finally stopped. Yeah. No, five is turning south. So they got, so it was too late by the time they actually attacked Moscow. This is a big deal. They stopped them. Nobody thought Germany could be stopped. And then, as German tanks are stopped right here in front of Moscow, Hitler would make his last mistake. The rest of them, all the rest of the mistakes, it's too late by then. Anybody want to guess what mistake number six is? He'll do it on December 10th, 1941. Germany declared war, a declaration of war on the U.S. He declared war. Now, Hitler was overjoyed that Japan attacked the United States. He thought now the U.S. will be preoccupied in the Pacific so they can't help the British, they won't get involved. This is a perfect time to declare war. That's insane. It's almost impossible to imagine the United States declaring war on Germany after Japan attacked American colonies. Because Americans would have said, let's get Japan. We won't worry about Germany now. But, uh, and Roosevelt had already decided that Germany was a much bigger threat. And if the United States entered a two-front war with Japan and Germany, 
the U.S. would commit 85% of its resources to fight Germany. It would turn out to be about 75%. What? So they attack the biggest country and now the biggest industrial power. The U.S. doesn't have a big army, but we have. We have stuff. So let's quickly get the U.S. into it. By the way, isn't it amazing? All the things that happened about World War II, and the side of the war, and we just got it. Good point. You both can do a little, but. You found the ant? Yeah, it's Steve. Yeah. It's called it's a banana. 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 It's a I got a strawberry mango sweet tea. I recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you going to give me tomorrow? Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, to so the strange to it. Library. Didn't it? Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.